Hi, and welcome to this edition of John's Model Kit Review. In today's fun, in-process model kit review, we will be looking at Academy Models 148 scale F86 Sabre. This is a special edition boxing. It is Academy kit number 12234. Just a brief history about the F-86 Sabre. It was a single-engine jet fighter aircraft designed by North American. Its advanced swept-wing design was based on captured World War II-era German research. It was designed as an air superiority fighter. It had an armament of six 50 caliber machine guns. It had a top speed of right around Mach 0.9. And it is most famous for its aerial dogfights during the Korean War with a Soviet-built MiG-15 jet aircraft. In this review, we'll be looking at what comes in the box. We'll also take a look at the kit instructions and we'll go through those. And I'll mention any problem areas to watch out for during construction. We'll take a look at the clear parts and talk about the clarity and fit of those. We'll look at the detailing on the smaller parts that are included with the kit. We'll look at the fit of the major components on the kit. We'll also talk about the surface detailing on the exterior of the kit. We'll look at the marking options that are included for this kit. We'll also look at the decals and talk about the quality of those. We'll look at any aftermarket parts I plan to use in this build, and I'll give my conclusions at the end. And we'll be attempting to answer the question, with Hasegawa's F-86 Sabre also available, is this Academy kit still worth building? Looking at what comes in the box, there are seven sprues of plastic parts and one sprue of clear parts, in addition to a large decal sheet. Looking at the instructions, step one has you building the intake trunk and painting the pilot figure and some of the interior detail that is molded to the top of the intake trunk and the landing gear detail that's molded to the bottom of the intake trunk. The detail on these parts looks very nice. This should paint up very nicely. And the detail on the pilot figures looks to be decent as well. Step two has you continuing to assemble the interior. And this step covers the only let down on this kit detail wise. And that is the pilot seat. And it is just a very basic representation. It's got ejector pen marks on it. And I would highly recommend either putting the pilot figure in there to cover up the lack of detail. Or you can do like I did and buy a resin replacement seat. You can see the detail on this seat is very, very nice. This is a True Details seat and it's the True Details instrument panel included as well. This has a little bit more relief than the stock instrument panel and it should make detail painting a little bit easier. The True Details part is 49010 and this is actually for the Hasegawa kit. So I don't plan on using all of these parts but definitely the seat and the instrument panel. Step number three has you assembling the jet engine, and I would really suggest making up your mind whether you're going to pose this kit opened up with the engine on display or closed up at this point, and then you can make your painting and assembly choices accordingly. And we can see the top section of step number four. If you're going to build the kit opened up, you actually need to separate the forward and rearward fuselage halves from one another. I like the way Academy did this. They molded the fuselage as a complete piece that eliminates the worry on that seam if you want to build the kit closed up, but it allows you to open it up very easily. In step four, we're trapping the interior and the jet engine between the fuselage halves. Make sure that you don't forget to add the 15 grams of weight to the nose of the aircraft to keep it from tail sitting. The fit on the upper seam looks great here, as does the fit on the lower seam. I think you should be able to clean this up very easily. In step five, we're assembling the wing. You just want to make sure to drill the holes for the ordnance you plan to use in this step. In step six, we're attaching the wing and the tail planes to the kit. Looking at the fit here, I think you're going to be able to get an almost filler-free build. The fit looks very precise, and even the underside of the wing looks like it's going to fit very nicely to the underside of the fuselage. Step seven has you assembling the 50 caliber machine guns and mounting them in the fuselage. 
It's a nice option to be able to display the gun base open if you want to. If not, you can simply put the covers, and those are parts D2 and D1, in place. The detailing on the machine guns themselves looks very nice. In step 8, we're assembling and attaching the nose gear to the aircraft. The detail on these parts looks very nice. I think these will paint up and really look beautiful once they're detail painted. Step 9 has you assembling the main gear. These True Details wheels came with the interior kit, and so I'll probably use these on the build. But the stock parts look adequate. In step 10, we're just attaching the main gear and the landing gear doors. Looking at the detail on the interior of the landing gear doors, and this looks very, very nice, and these should look great on the finished kit. In step 11, we're just adding some more exterior bits to the airframe. In step 12, we're attaching the cockpit canopy and some more detail bits. The canopy itself looks great. It is clear. It looks like the fit on this is going to be nice. The only thing that you have to watch out for is there is a seam along the middle of the rear canopy section that needs to be sanded out and polished out prior to attaching it on the aircraft. You can see that in this picture. Step 13 covers the assembly of the optional underwing ordnance. The detail on these parts looks okay. They're not super detailed, but they should look nice on the finished kit. Step 14 has you attaching the ordnance to the wing. And step 15 covers the assembly of the tail section dolly if you want to build the plane opened up. There's only one marking option included in this kit. It's for a 39th Fighter Interceptor Squadron F-86 flown by Lieutenant James L. Thompson from Suwon Air Base in Korea in June of 1953. This is a large decal sheet. It's very comprehensive. It was printed by Cartograph, and the decals honestly look great. I don't anticipate any problems with these at all. Looking at the surface detail of the kit, the detailing that is there is petite, it's engraved, it's consistent. The detailing isn't overly rivet heavy, and it might be a little bit on the simplistic side compared to the most modern of kits. But this is going to look great under a coat of paint, and I really think this finished kit will look good on the shelf. In conclusion, with Hasegawa's F-86 Sabre currently available, is this Academy kit still worth building? Well, there's quite a few people out there who consider this to be the definitive F-86 kit although there are certainly proponents for the F-86 from Hasegawa. I think these kits compete pretty much on equal terms with one another, with each having a few pluses and minuses. I don't see any real surprises in construction with this kit. The fit on all of the parts that I have dry fit together really seems nice. The detailing on the parts looks nice, and the only real drawback I see detail-wise on this kit is the pilot seat. But that problem is easily solved by either installing the pilot figure or, as in my case, replacing the seat with a resin replacement. I can highly recommend this kit to modelers with a little bit of experience. And the finished kit will look great on the shelf in a display of Korean War era jet fighters. All right, I'd love to know what you guys think. If any of you have built Academy's F-86 Sabre previously, please feel free to comment in the comment section below. As always, I hope you found this video entertaining and informative, and until next time, model on.